I this year was diagnosed as autistic. Now, without wishing to to be uh, overly invasive, give us a ballpark figure of your age. I am thirty four. So for thirty four, I am. (laughs) You're committed to it, right? So for thirty four years, you had no idea of this. No, I had no idea. I always felt that I was a little bit something, uh, like a little bit too something, like a little bit too sensitive, a little bit too controlling, a little bit too anxious, always just a little bit off. And I wondered a lot as a kid, particularly like as I started to diverge, you know, when with girls, like we were all fine in primary school and then secondary school, girls started to change and wear makeup and like different music. And I was like, what? hang on, we all decided that we liked the Spice Girls and that we were going to hang out at my house on Friday night. Why do you want to go to that park and sit in a bush and what's happening and how long are we going to be there and who's going to be there and who's going to pick us up why am I different why can I not relate to the impulses of other people Um, and did you not do what most of us do which is think the problem is with them I'm right and they just need to get online with my plans no Anton I wish that that's how I had been but I know I internalised it thought there was something wrong with me did endless personality tests online quizzes was constantly like what's what who am what's wrong with me what am I why am I different am I an INTJ and I am ENFT you know these Myers-Briggs tests doing BuzzFeed quizzes about like what type of soap are you just I knew there was something and I couldn't maybe it was that I was a Taurus but actually it was that I was autistic and but I never thought of that because my version of autism and this is a huge barrier to diagnosis my version of autism was based on Rain Man or you know genius savant men who are unemotional can't make eye contact or a seven year old boy who rocks back and forth and can't respond to his mother and That's my fault. Google exists. I could have done research, but the mass media was feeding me. This is what autism is. And it didn't look like me. And then it was suggested to me a few times um, by a doctor. I was working with a doctor actually when I published my first book. And my first book was called Why Can't Everything Just Stay the Same? And it was about how I really struggled to tolerate change. And I was working with a doctor at that time and she said, oh, I read your book and, you know, it's really great. Would you consider being assessed for ASD? And I was That's autism spectrum autism disorder. Autism spectrum disorder, which is now called, I think, ASC. It's also like a whole new language that I have to learn because it's not a disorder. It's a condition, so it's called ASC, but I'm really got my L plates on there. Um, How did you react when that was said I kind of laughed it off and was like, I have a cousin who's autistic. I have an uncle who's autistic. They're both non-speaking. Um, I can make eye contact. I, you know, I have a, a job. I'm not Rain Man. I'm actually pretty terrible at maths. So no, thank you. And then it was suggested to me again. Did you take it as an insult? Um, no, I I take very few things that doctors say. I, do, I have doctors up in a very high pedestal, you know, <laughs> so I wouldn't take it with an insult. I, I did some research the second time that it was suggested to me and I thought, oh, there might be something in this, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid of it. And then the pandemic happened and... Um, I was I was on social media a lot during the pandemic, helping other people to process what was happening. And I noticed that while a lot of people were struggling with their mental health during the pandemic, what was happening to me was slightly different. I just became fixated on the data. I could have told you how many cases there were in any country on a given day, how many, you know, how many cases there were developing in Ireland as they developed. And then as the government were coming out with the new rules, I was reading those long documents and telling people like how many people you can have at a wedding, how many, you know, all of that stuff. But you see, I suspect that as you say that there will be people listening, thinking, but I do that. And and I in doing it, I don't infer into it that it's a problem. Why did you think this isn't quote, no, normal? It wasn't that. So 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 there's two things there. One is that, yes, things that are autistic traits for me, you also might do. But on balance, it's sort of like saying blind people bump into walls and you saying, oh, yes, I've bumped into a wall. Yes, but, you know, you don't have the experience and the um, accumulation of these symptoms, we'll call them. Um, I wasn't worried about catching COVID. I wasn't worried about, I was very worried about why people were not sticking to the rules. Like, these are very clear rules. You are told to do it. Why would you not do it? And I can be quite literal in my understanding of things. Like, as a child, my mother would have said, like, I'll pick you up at two on the dot. And gotten very upset at two o'clock when I couldn't find the dot because she wouldn't be able to find me. All those sorts of things that, you know, going through the autism assessment, you have to bring back up. 
So why did you do the assessment? Because the third, I was seeing a psychologist and I was getting very upset in my therapy sessions about the rules and not knowing when the pandemic would be over and different things that the people who were having mental health issues, because I was doing a mental health podcast at the time, they were presenting with different sorts of anxieties to me. So I was saying this to him and he said, why don't you get assessed for ASD? And when, because I do think based on everything that you've said, it might help you to know or even let's rule it out. And I think when three people say something to you, professionals it's sort of irresponsible maybe to not so I sort of boisterously and oppositionally emailed the people that he told me to get the assessment from was like oh my therapist says that I should get an assessment and we started the process which is kind of protracted but that was sort of the beginning of it. What's the process like? Long and I suppose it should be it can't be like one subjective version of a psychologist saying yes I think you're autistic so you are Um. It's, you do this, the DSM-5 Diagnostic and your statistical, statistical manual. manual. So there are basically criteria that you have to meet. And so it starts with... And the DSM is, I think it's the American derived definition of a whole series of conditions and disorders that you say, OK, if you meet these if criteria, you, meet these criteria, you have criteria. this Yes, and diagnosis. it does change and it, and it adapts. Um, for example, like in the DSM-4, autism would have been broken down into more like Asperger syndrome was a version of it but now it's just all autism anyway um, so they start by asking you have to do a lot of questionnaires first of all intake forms about your experience of um, how you process change sensory processing they ask my mother for to fill in forms as well and then also my husband so that um, we had to answer the same questions from each of our perspectives um, and then from those they say uh, yeah, come for an assessment. I mean, it might become very clear that you are not autistic at that level and at that stage and they would say don't. Um, but uh, then it's three long sessions with a psychologist where you go through those sorts of experiences. So like, how are you with maintaining friendships? You know, and I would say like, oh, I have lots of friends, but I do struggle to maintain friendships. Sometimes I have been told that I'm too intense or that I'm too controlling or too manipulative, you know, whatever. Um, but I... I, and that's upsetting when it happens because those are not my intentions and you know or how are you with processing senses and I'd say well I've never been to a concert because they're too loud and crowds are too much for me and my socks have to be on a particular way and when you're going You have never been to a concert? I went to Robbie Williams once and I had to ask a guard to walk me home because it was too loud and I didn't even get to see Robbie Williams Kelly Osborne supported him and it was just too much Well I could see Kelly Osborne being difficult <laughs> for anybody <but> just <laughs> Yeah so like when you're painting I love the Counting Crows and I loved that album but if you made me go to that concert I would not cope So when at the end of this process they come out and say okay we have a, a diagnosis this is um, what you have are whatever is the, the correct term is that a relief? Is Does it change how you view yourself? What effect if any does it have on you? Um, it's part of it is a relief and then it's this sort of a big fear as well like um, it was a it was a shock but it wasn't at all a surprise and that's also been my experience of sharing the news with other people who know me they're like oh, all right that makes sense 